Ubuntu 1704 is scheduled for formal release on the 13th of April 2017, so in this video I'm taking a look at some of the new features we can expect to see. Once again, much of the work to Ubuntu has been done to the underlying system, so what you see on a desktop looks pretty much what you have seen in the past few releases. Unity 8 has once again been deemed not to be ready for desktop usage, however you can choose between the legacy Unity 7 or newer Unity 8 desktop at login. The first major new feature is driverless printing. You can now use an IPP or Internet Printing Protocol based printer and Apple AirPrint printers without installing any drivers, and I quote, this way of connecting a printer gets as easy as connecting a USB stick. Unfortunately, I do not own a printer, so I'm unable to verify how well this feature works. Although I am thinking of investing in one because there have been a few cases where it would have been easier to print out some notes rather than rely on a mobile or tablet. I know I'm jumping ahead here a bit, but I believe this is the only feature that could warrant upgrading from the long-term support release of Ubuntu 16.04 to Ubuntu 17.04 because this release is just an interim release and only supported for nine months. Most of the other features I'm going to go through here are either not necessary or can be backported to 16.04. The next new feature is that swap partitions are no longer required. Ubuntu now utilizes swap files instead of a swap partition. With the increase in size of memory on modern systems, sacrificing a dedicated area of your hard drive for something that won't receive much use doesn't really make much sense. Combined with the reduction in price and increased uptake of solid state drives, I know I keep calling them disks, but I'm old fashioned, but yes, SSDs, we have a drive which has a limited read-write cycle, so all the more incentive to use a swap file. Files will be no more than 5% of free disk space, or 2 gigabytes, whichever is lower. The Linux kernel has been uplifted to version 4.10, and that provides support for the Intel KB Lake and AMD Ryzen CPUs, as well as better support for ARM devices, as evidence of the work being done to bring Android and the mainline kernels together, this release will include support for the Nexus 6P, the Nexus 5X, and Pine 64 development boards, which are based on the all-winner A64 SoC, or System on Chip. There is also improved support for the Raspberry Pi 3. Synaptics touchpad has seen some improvement. And there is also support for the Sony DualShock 4 controllers via Bluetooth. The open source graphics library Meta has been uplifted to version 17.0.2. Great for anyone who wants to use the AMD Vulkan, Intel or Novu graphics drivers, but I expect Meta 17 will be backported to the LTS release of Ubuntu 16.04. I believe there are some new games for Linux which do require Meta 17, but what would have been sensible to do was to look those up prior to recording the video. LibreOffice has been updated to version 5.3, which brings us the new My User Friendly and Flexible Interface, or Muffin for short. It allows you to choose from four different toolbar styles, including a single toolbar, a sidebar, a notebook bar, which closely resembles the Microsoft ribbon bar, and the old default style. Yeah, I'm happier keeping it on the old default style. Applications provided by GNOME have been updated to version 3.24. However, there are a few exceptions, including the Nautilus file manager and terminal, which have been held at version 3.20. Evolution and software have been held at version 3.22. Gconf is no longer installed by default, since it has been superseded by G settings. And there was a warning on the Ubuntu 1704 beta release notes that preferences for the Ale Riot card games would be reset when you update to version 1704. You can take a look at the new Unity 8 settings in the Unity 7 desktop. I don't know how much of an effect these will have in the Unity 7 desktop, probably not much when it comes to rotation lock, I don't ever believe that was a feature of the Unity 7. But it is another method of looking at the system settings. Oh, we can adjust the wheel scrolling speed. 
I'm sure when I tried this out in the earlier stages of development, it didn't really make much difference. Now something else I noticed that has been changed is the icons for the Ubuntu specific applications of system settings and the browser. And don't they look completely out of place there? Come on, they're oversized and filled right up to the edges. Especially when you look through the rest of the applications and they do look normal. So, oh yeah, you've got log out and reboot shut down as well. They're all oversized and are a different style as well. Okay, once again, I'm picking on the artistic cohesion of Ubuntu. Something which uh, has been rather lacking, really, in my opinion. But it has at least got better. I don't know why VLC is oversized, but I installed that for a snap, rather than the software center. Well, that sums up the major changes with Ubuntu. So is it worth upgrading from the long-term support release of Ubuntu 16.04? Well, not really. The driverless printing certainly appeals, that is something that you will not get easily in Ubuntu 16.04. In terms of everything else, well, okay, the, the swap partition is something you won't get either, but is it much of a major deal? Not really. You can have a newer version of the kernel with the LTS enablement stack, and I believe at some point we will see the newer version of the Mesa graphics drivers, so that eliminates those gains. The newer version of LibreOffice might be interesting, but you can add that for a Launchpad PPA for LibreOffice, so there's not much gain there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.